Okay, folks, this is, we are still in chapter six, the normal distribution. This is video number one in section six dash four. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, table of contents. You, I, I like to do that just to kind of see where we're, where we are and kind of make sure we have the, our orientation correct, okay? In fact, let me just bounce back a tiny bit here. We were... All right, so chapter five was the so-called discrete probability distributions. So the, the, a probability distribution is a, a very simple concept. It's where you assign a probability to a particular random variable a, a value, okay? And remember, I said a very simplistic way of thinking about probability distributions to compare and contrast them to frequency distributions. And a frequency distribution, like we talked about at the very beginning of this term, a frequency distribution is what have you got, whereas a probability distribution is what do you, what do you expect to get? What's the probability? What are you expecting to get? Okay. So discrete probability distribution. I'm sorry, the probability distributions can be divided into two categories, discrete and continuous. Discrete refers to the fact that the random variable is a discrete random variable. Continuous refers to the fact that the random variable is a continuous variable. So we talked about discrete probability distributions. One of the big ones that we dealt with was binomial distribution. And I'm sure you'll remember how hard that was to do the calculation. The formula was very difficult, uh, you know, because we had those crazy binomial coefficients. Okay, so I'm bounced over here to, this is the, the important formulas in, uh, in chapter five. So here's the binomial probability formula. You know, we had this this guy right here, this right here is called the binomial coefficient. So it's very difficult. I mean, the probability of X successes out of uh, N trials, uh, it was N factorial, N minus X factorial, X factorial. I mean, it gets to be kind of tedious to calculate it, right? So what are we going to do about that? What we're going to do about that is in chapter six, the normal distribution, we have in section 6-4, we have the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. So the, the concept here is that the, the normal distribution is so convenient, it's so easy to do things with it, that if we can get close enough, if we can get answers that are close enough, then we'll use the approximation. And uh, that's the concept behind uh, section 6-4, okay? So 6-4 is we're going to use the normal distribution. Even though the normal distribution is a continuous distribution and the binomial distribution is a discrete distribution, we can still get close enough answers to use the normal approximation. Okay, so as he says here, we can use the normal distribution to solve problems that involve the binomial distribution when n is large, for example, 100. The calculations are way too difficult to do by hand using the binomial distribution, okay? So, you know, let's use an approximation. So here, here's a review of what the uh, characteristics are of a binomial distribution. I'm going to let you read that, okay? I'll let you read all of this, okay? But I do want to talk about one little aspect of this. Remember that P, well, let's take a look here. N is the number of trials. P is the probability of a success for a given trial. So you flip a coin, a probability of getting a tail is one half. Okay. Uh, and then it says when, it, when P is approximately one half, approximately 0.5, as n increases more and more uh, trials, the shape of the binomial distribution becomes similar to that of a normal distribution. The larger n is and the closer p is to 0.5, the more similar the shapes are to a normal distribution. So that's good news, right? We can, we can kind of wing it. We can fake it using the normal distribution. All right, so if you don't have that condition, if, for example, if p is close to zero or p is close to one, 
and then you have a small n, well, then it's not such a great approximation. Well, how do you decide? There's got to be a rule, right? So here's the rule. Uh, we, we normally say that the normal approximation should be used only when n times p and n times q are both greater than or equal to 5. And we will see in a minute here an example of how that works. If that is true, if you meet that requirement, then you can use the normal distribution to approximate the normal. You can use the normal distribution to approximate the binomial distribution. So here's a comparison. Okay, uh, we have uh, n is 10, p is 0.3, so n p is going to be 3, all right? Is that good enough? Let's take a look. n p is, uh, n p is, oh, it's not greater than 5, so it's not that great, you know, not a, not a really good uh, approximation, is it? This curve right here, that's the normal distribution. It really doesn't match very well the binomial uh, distribution. The binomial distribution being this histogram, okay? All right, so now how about this? How about if n is 10 and p is 0.5? Well, 10 times 0.5 is 5. Uh, n times q is also 5. Hey, it meets the requirement, okay? It has to be greater than or equal to, okay? All right. Uh, he makes a point here. you got to have a correction for continuity. What, what he's referring to is this. Let me see if I can make this more clear. I am absolutely berserk on the subject of don't just draw cartoons. Don't just draw these, you know, this Cartesian coordinates here. And you need to understand what exactly it is telling you. So what this cartoon here is telling you is that the, it is a binomial distribution. So the random variable is the number of of successes is what we're dealing with here. So you flip a coin. How many times do you get ahead? You take a test, you pass or fail. You uh, it rains or it doesn't rain. Okay. So whatever your number of whatever the number of uh, successes is, uh, or, or I'm sorry, the, the random variable is how many successes. Okay. You're counting the number of successes. So that's what. You know, do you have you you do it a hundred times? You get one success, you get two success, you get three success. Uh, actually, I take that back. N, N is is ten here. So if N is ten, I apologize, that was a big mistake. So N is ten. So the probability of getting one success, the probability of getting two successes, probability of seven successes, and so forth, is depicted in this histogram. So the probability, for example, of getting say seven successes is 0.117 and that's right there okay now if you were to to look at this value for the, the normal distribution i i told you before that the the y value the 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 y axis for the normal distribution is not exactly the probability but it's close enough for government work to kind of think about it that way, okay? Because what you do is you do a you do a uh, correction for continuity. What you do is you say, well, you know, the probability on a normal distribution, the probability of seven exactly, you know, it's the area under the curve, right? So the area under the curve for a, a line that goes from seven up to here is zero. So the the, the probability to be precise is zero, but you can have a correction for continuity. You can say, well, how about if I go between 6.9 and 7.1? That's close enough for government work. Well, now I've got an interval, 6.9 to 7.1. That little, that uh, is not depicted here, obviously, but that little, um, that little rectangle there, it has an area under the curve. So that that is an approximation for the binomial probability. If you have the appropriate correction, uh, if you have the appropriate little correction for continuity, you can use the normal distribution to approximate the binomial distribution, which is kind of goes against uh, you know your thoughts right because you say well gee uh, the the normal distribution is continuous the binomial is discrete how can they approximate each other well you'll see here in just a minute how that works okay so what's a correction for continuity is a correction i'll let you read that pretty clear i think okay all right 
for any specific value of x, let's say 8, the boundaries of x in the binomial distribution, we're going to, so for 8, we're going to go from 7.5 to 8.5, is, is what he's saying right here. Hence, when you employ a normal distribution to approximate the binomial, you must use the boundaries for any specific value x as they are shown in the binomial distribution. Okay, so we'll take a look at the example for p equals x. The correction is we, we go between 7.5 and 8.5. If we're going to look at it from the point of view of, well, what's the probability that x is less than or equal to 7? Okay, less than or equal to 7. Well, then we go up to 7.5 and we go to the left. And we'll see some examples of this, okay? He's got a, he's got a summary of the approximations. If you can memorize this, you know, God bless you. I, I can't memorize things like this at all. And it's not because I'm having senior moments. I've never been able to memorize stuff like this. And my experience is that when people try to memorize stuff like this, it's it, it, in a moment of stress, they forget it. So in my opinion, a better approach is just to understand the concept. And you can derive the rule instantly if you understand the concept. Okay. Okay. So here we go. The formulas for the mean and standard deviation for the binomial uh, distribution are necessary for calculations. Now, wh wh where the heck did this come from? You probably didn't pay attention to it at the time, but we talked about this when we were in the uh, the section of uh, the the binomial uh, distribution. I, I, let me see if I can find that. Okay, so this right here is the is the um, formulas, important formulas from chapter five. Formula for the mean of the binomial distribution. Formulas for the variance and standard deviation for the binomial distribution. Okay, so uh, we did talk about it at that time. <laughs> okay, the, the the concept is very simple. The concept is, let's take flipping a coin. Okay, you flip a coin n times. Let's say you do it a hundred times. The probability of success, the probability of getting a a tail, for example. Okay, is one half. So one half times n gives you mu is one half times a hundred gives you 50 so 50 the mean of the number of tails is going to be 50 that's your expected value okay and then the same thing here the variance and standard deviation this variance is very simple to calculate it's just n times p times q is the is the variance the standard deviation is just take the square root so that's one of the reasons that we all know and love the we, this, that's why we love this uh, uh, binomial distribution because it's so easy to calculate the mean and the standard deviation and so forth okay all right so give me one second here okay so now I'm back I'm back in section 6-4 specifically I'm on page 356 and by the way I am on the I am in the uh, edition uh, the 10th edition okay so here, here's the formulas he's just reminding us of this okay and then we says okay the steps for using the normal distribution are right here so that's the blue table okay first thing you got to make sure that you can use it so you got that rule np uh, has to be greater than or equal to five and nq has to be greater than or equal to five we can find the mean mu and the standard deviation very very quickly right here no problema whatsoever okay write the problem in probability notation using x x stands for a random variable and then rewrite the problem by using the continuity correction and show the corresponding area under the normal distribution. Okay, and then find the corresponding z values. Okay, great. So let's let's jump into this. Uh, this is the one that's talking about falling asleep while driving. So uh, I see I'm almost out of time. So let me let me stop the t video now, and my next video will start with example six one six dash one six.